Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will explain bilateral sagittal split osteotomy as described by Hansak. The Hansak modification is the Avijizer del Pont osteotomy where the split does not extend to the posterior border. It extends from the interior border of the ramus to just behind the entrance of the inferior alveolar canal or lingula. It divides the mandible into two smaller condyle bearing segments and a large segment consisting of mandibular body including teeth and chin. It may reduce the amount of bony interferences between the proximal and distal segment. And uh, also it may reduce the risk for bad splits. Uh, this is a universal procedure that can be employed for all mandibular movements. To illustrate the procedure, we will here show the correction of mandibular retrognathism. Most of the surgical steps are same as described for Obvijizer and Del Pont in our previous videos. However, all steps will be reproduced here in proper sequence. The obvious problem of this procedure uh, is the close proximity of the osteotomy lines and the neurovascular canal. Care should be taken not to damage the inferior alveolar nerve during this procedure. Do a proper planning of orthognathic surgery. For this procedure, the transoral approach to the mandibular angle and transoral approach to the lateral mandibular body is used. The procedure starts with uh, three corticotomies. The first cut is made through the lingual cortex, just above the mandibular foramen parallel uh, to the occlusion. The corticotomy is extended from the interior border of the ramus to just behind the entrance of inferior alveolar canal or lingula. The second corticotomy is made through the buccal cortex in a vertical direction at the level of the first or second molar. The third corticotomy is uh, along the interior border of the ascending ramus connects the first two lines. The final split that is a sagittal split is completed with a thin osteotome splitting the entire ascending ramus from interior to the posterior border of the ramus just behind the entrance of the inferior alveolar canal or lingula. A special bone spreader can be used to mobilize the segments. After the bilateral split is completed, the large tooth bearing segments can be moved three dimensionally. MMF is uh, performed to position the large tooth bearing segment to the desired relationship with the maxilla. A prefabricated surgical splint or wafer may be used to facilitate this. Care must be uh, taken to maintain the normal fossa uh, condyle relation and to avoid condylar displacement. This is usually achieved by manual positioning of the condyle bearing segment superiorly into the glenoid fossa. An alternate a method of positioning the condyle bearing segment is to use a condyle positioning device such as plates. After outlining the osteotomy lines, the patient is placed into MMF using a centric relation bite wafer. Plates are adapted to spin uh, between the ascending ramus and the maxilla or zygomatic bone bilaterally taking care to avoid the planned osteotomy sites. Positioning a uh, plate or MMF are then removed and a bilateral uh, sagittal split osteotomy is performed as previously described. After placing the patient 
into the desired final occlusion, the positioning plates are reattached to position the condyle into their preoperative position within the glenoid fossa. An alternative to this intraoperative position control with navigation. Finally, the osteosynthesis is performed and plates are placed here. That will be explained in the next slides. Then the condyle positioning device is removed. Some movements will require removal of bone to allow for a good alignment of the respective segments. If a significant male relationship of the proximal and distal segments occurs, a secondary osteotomy and additional osteotomy in the posterior aspect of the tooth bearing segment may be necessary. Care must be taken not to injure the inferior alveolar nerve. This will allow for a better alignment of the proximal and distal segments and facilitate passive osteosynthesis. Internal fixation is usually performed with positioning screws, plates or combination. Screw placement is usually performed with either transbuccal in instrumentation or angulated drills and screwdrivers. A minimum of two and preferably three bicortical position screws are placed between the buccal and lingual cortices. Care should be taken to avoid damaging the inferior alveolar nerve. Two possible patterns of uh, screw placement are demonstrated here. A plate can be applied across the segments on the lateral aspect of the mandible uh, using monocortical screws. A minimum of two screws on each side of the osteotomy is necessary. Avoid placing the plates and screws in close proximity to the inferior alveolar canal in order to avoid damage to the inferior alveolar nerve. For additional stability, a second mini plate uh, can be added to close to the inferior border of the mandible using bicortical screws. Combination of a single plate and a positioning screw that is the anti-rotation screw are also possible. This improves stability against rotational forces. After completion of osteosynthesis on both sides, the MMF is released and the resulting occlusion is checked against the pre-planned position. The splint may be fixed to the maxillary teeth with a few thin wires and left in place during the healing phase to allow for neuromuscular adaption and position control. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.